自我完善、自我革新、自我提高的能力。This is a very significant moment. Xi Jinping is only the third leader since the foundation of the Chinese People's Republic in 1949 to have his name and his thoughts enshrined in the country's constitution. The first was Mao Zedong, who actually won the Chinese Civil War, founded the People's Republic. The second was Deng Xiaoping, who changed China profoundly by opening the country up to capitalism, or they, they called it socialism with Chinese characteristics. Xi is now the third, and in a way, it's even more significant than what happened with Deng because his thoughts were only put into the constitution after his death. This has happened with Xi after he's only been in power for five years and it's a real sign that increasingly this country's system is focused on one man, the ultimate leader, Xi Jinping. Chinese liberals are certainly very worried that China is going backwards politically, that rather than moving towards a more democratic, more pluralistic system, it's increasingly focused on something that's looking a little like a cult of personality around Xi Jinping. When he gave his big speech at the party plenum, government offices, universities, even kindergartens were all ordered to watch. So it does look increasingly centralized, and some people are even saying it's looking a bit Maoist. I think that's probably a little far-fetched because it's sort of impossible to run a country as modern and sophisticated as China along the lines that Mao Zedong did. But nonetheless, this is much more like a one-man rule uh, rather than a collective leadership. And people do think that Xi Jinping is digging in for the long term, that unlike his two predecessors who left after 10 years in office, he may stay for 15, who knows, even 20 years. Xi Jinping's thought, however, the thoughts that have now been written into the constitution is rather less memorable than Deng's policy of reform and opening up. But essentially, it has several elements. One, continue the reform and opening of the economy. Two, continue with the anti-corruption drive. And finally, press ahead with China's rejuvenation as a major power. Under Xi Jinping, it's become much more obvious that China is actually challenging the Western-led world order. And that challenge is taking place on three fronts. In terms of ideology, China is now much more willing to openly reject the idea that all countries should at some point become democratic and to insist on the virtues of its own one-party state, which it says is good for China and maybe good for other developing countries too. On the economic front, China is now, by some measures, the largest economy in the world. And significantly, and perhaps a little worryingly for Western-led economies, it's no longer just a manufacturing superpower uh, concentrating on low-cost exports. It's increasingly a high-tech country, which in certain areas of, of tech, such as mobile payments, is actually ahead of the West. And I think China's economic challenge is only growing in pace. And the third element is that in geopolitical terms, China is becoming much more assertive. It's pressing its claims to islands in the South China Sea. Uh, its territorial disputes with Japan and India continue to bubble away. And it's also pushing a new policy, which it calls One Belt, One Road, which is trying to create a whole new land space, if you like, across Eurasia, in which transport links continue to push Chinese economic and political influence all the way to Europe. Mm -hmm.